<laughs> okay, so in the previous video, we saw how we can make a mask using a gradient map. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use a levels node to do the same thing. Obviously, each one has, you know, you, you're going to use them in different situations, but this is also one that I use a lot. And you can have either a color or a grayscale input. So you can run levels on color images or grayscale images. And we're going to plug this into the height here. And this gives us, you know, the exact image here. But I, I what I want to do is I want to get rid of this bevel. I want to just have this black area. I could do it with a gradient map, but we're going to do it this way instead. And I'm going to start moving my levels around until I've got a clean line that I'm happy with. Okay, like that. So that's super simple. You know, and you can also do the global ins and outs here too. And it works like a levels node in pretty much any other program, and you can do color levels. So before we go any further, I want to talk about exactly what's going on when we use a mask in a blend node. Now, it is absolutely always going to have to be a grayscale. And that's because the way the masks work is anything, it, anything on the foreground, the mask is the mask is applying to the foreground. So let's put something in the foreground. Whatever I mask out, if it's white, it's going to show up. If it's black, it's going to be completely see-through. So you can see the checkerboards in here. And then varying levels of gray in between are going to give you in between opacities. And that's how, you know, masks work. So as I was bringing this levels up and down, it can't get any, the white can't get any lighter. So if I do this, it's just going to lighten up the areas that are black. And in fact, something that's a little bit more advanced, uh, very often, this is a way that I'll have input parameters be able to actually change the material using functions. So you can, you can actually have these things as part of an input, but that's for later. And depending on what we use as a mask, we're going to get different things blocked out. So this mask is only giving us the edges, and this mask is only giving us what we designated as the inside. And that makes sense, because if we look at this, you know, right now the color which is what this is, is kind of going halfway, you know, it's kind of going halfway up that bevel. And we're going to fix that in just a minute. But first, we've kind of got a bit of an issue here because I'd really rather have my color, which I'm actually going to just use a color here, not the gradient map. I'm going to add node, right click, add node, uniform color. Uh, let's pick something fun. That's a nice color. And we're going to talk. Now, I want to do I want to do this one, yeah. So it's actually giving me anything, um, anything checkerboard here will always read as black in your output. So this is actually giving me the exact opposite of what I want, because I want my seams in here to be this fuchsia color. So there's a node for that. If I go into my library and I type invert, I have either an invert color or an invert grayscale. And we're going to invert a grayscale. And I can just drag it up on top of this noodle. And you'll see how that noodle highlighted. And it'll pop it right in there for me. And this just inverted my grayscale. And if you have a color, it'll invert the color. It'll just find the opposite color. If we take a look at the instance parameters on this invert grayscale node, it only has one. And that's a true false. So it's kind of cool to have this because sometimes it's nice to check. You know, if you're deciding whether you want something one way or another way, you can put that node in there and then just switch it true or false. So if it's set to true, it will invert the gray. If it's set to false, 
it won't. And again, this is something that you can also put between two nodes and have a function deal with that. So I now have some nice fuchsia line, you know, like grout, I guess. And I can put my old gradient map into the background. And what it's done is it's overlaid this foreground over the background according to the information in this mask. So anything that's white is going to be 100%. Anything that's black is going to be 0%. And the grays are going to correspond to numbers in between that. And then I can come into the blend and still do things with the blend. So I can always bring down the opacity and just kind of put a sheen on that. Or I can actually change the blend itself, which over black, we're not going to, oh, that's kind of interesting. So, you know, you have, you have a lot of power to, uh, to really start to control your colors when you, um, when you start to use masks. And we can also, um, you know what, let's switch this around. I'm going to take my gradient map and I'm going to plug it into the dirt. Maybe let's adjust our gradient a little bit so we get a little bit more color. Let's bring it down. This makes it a little bit more interesting and it'll let us apply some things on top of it. So we have now a mask and a color for our grout. And then we still have this mask that we created for these bevels. So we can bring another blend node in here and we can get, well, I know what would be fun. I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit so we get a little bit more color. We can use this same gradient map and we can use a hue saturation lightness node. Now notice this one will only work with a color. There's no bar that says either grayscale or color. So it won't let me plug it in there, but it will let me plug it in here. So we'll take this very same gradient map that we're using for the bricks and we'll run it through this hue saturation lightness node and blend it over what we've already made using the mask that gives us these, this bevel right here. So I'll go ahead and plug that into my color and we can come into the HSL node and here we can do a bunch of stuff. We can lighten it or darken it. We can change the hue. We can increase or decrease the saturation. And we're just adjusting the stuff, you know, so we're taking, we're taking the pattern that's already existing in those bricks and just adjusting it with a hue saturation lightness. And again, you will notice that anything in substance, where you see this little graph sign has the capacity to, you know, to like have an input parameter, make it do things. So you can pretty much animate any of this stuff or have it be toggled uh, at any point once you learn how to do functions. Now, the one thing that I would like to do is to cut out uh, the bumpiness on this grout. And it's not, happening in a, it's not happening in our color. If we look at our color here. Oh, it is happening in our color too. Okay. Oh, that's because, okay. I was like, I was confused. Um, it's the divide that threw me off. I'm like, where's that color coming from? I'm going to switch this back to copy. Um, it's not coming through our color. <laughs> it was only coming through because it was doing a blend and it was picking up the color underneath. Uh, it is coming through, however, on our normal. So I would like to apply this same mask to our normal. So if we come back here and we look at this blend, which is an overlay, if we take this very same mask that we're using here, except instead of using the inverse, I, I like, I like to do them like this. Uh, this is just, this is just me. The way I, I work is that if I, if I create a mask and I create an inverse of that mask, I'll stack them up like this together. So I just know that they're, you know, opposites of each other and I can use them either way. Because in this particular case, I want to, I have my, you know, my grains coming in on top. So that's the foreground. That's what gets masked out. 
but I don't want them to be there. So instead of using the inverse, I'm going to use the positive version of it. And that's going to cut that out of there. So this is saying that whatever is in this foreground position, go according to this mask, black equals zero, white equals 100%. And that changes this so that it's flat. And are we getting... Oh, no, you know what? The... the um, we're not getting any, well, we're not getting gr as many grains on the bevel. It just doesn't look as, um, as grainy, I guess. That's okay. That's the overlay. It's good enough for now. Okay, so I think that's it for this segment. And in the next segment, we'll start working on all our other um, things here. So the, the roughness and the metallic. Okay, so we're almost done with our wall experiment here. The only thing we have left is our roughness and metallic. And just like uh, the masks, they work on a grayscale. And what that means is that if something is completely white, it will be, well, in this case, completely rough. There'll be absolutely, I mean, there'll, there'll be absolutely no light reflecting off of it at all. It's also completely metal in this case. So, it, but it's, it, when, when a metal doesn't have, when a metal has no shine, it's really hard to tell it's a metal. Let me get another color. I'm going to turn it to a grayscale. And you see how that changed. So I just took all the metallic out of it. And then as I move this into gray, it's getting shinier and shinier and shinier because it has less and less roughness. So it works on the same principle. And if I have this all the way down to black and I bring the metallic all the way up to white, it's going to look like shiny metal now. And that's how all the grayscale masks work. Black equals zero, white equals one or 100% kind of cool actually yeah I, I think we're gonna make them metallic <laughs> but let's do something a little bit more interesting than flat colors so we'll, we'll start with the roughness now we could use this but that wouldn't give me an opportunity to introduce a new node so we're gonna find something else I'm gonna I'm gonna do it off of this normal and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type normal to height and there are two versions. There's a, an HQ version and a regular version. The HQ version, obviously, is HQ, but it's going to cost you more. So it really depends on how important getting that height information is. Now, again, this will only take a color, and it's only going to take a normal, by the way. I don't think it'll plug into, never tried it, but I don't think it'll plug into like a uniform color. Yeah, it doesn't like it. It's not going to do, you could probably do, you can do it the other way, but it's not going to like, it, it will not plug in because it has been designated as a normal. But that's what we have here. This has now taken our normal and converted it into height information. And you can see how it's very different from the original grayscale mass that we're making it from. So it gets turned into a normal. We, you know, we adjusted the height of the normal and now it's m a much smoother blend in here. You'll notice it's also inherited this size information because we brought the size of this down. And I think I'm going to do it at this spot because what we have here is this normal node is getting its information from the input and I wanted to have it be relative to parent. And that's going to bring it up to 2K. So we now have this normal that's been turned into height information. And I'm going to get a levels node because I, I, I'd like to see it a little bit more contrasty. And now I'm going to think exactly how I want my roughnesses. I'm thinking right now about just the top of these bricks. I want the very tops of those grains because we're going to be making it metal i want that to be the shiniest part right because that's the part that rubs up against stuff and then like the deeper bits i want them to be a little bit less shiny 
this is height information. So again, a height map, just like all these other maps, it's a grayscale map. So whatever is the lightest is going to be the highest and whatever is the darkest is going to be the lowest. And what this means is that our highest bits here, if we plug this into a roughness map, they're going to be the roughest. So basically it's exactly the opposite of what we need. And we already know what to do with that. Because it's a grayscale, I'm going to get an invert grayscale. And I'm going to take this result and I'm going, well, actually, I'm going to take this result because this way I can do the levels off of the actual inverted thing as opposed to guessing. And that's a very different picture now. So the high areas on this height map correspond to the areas with the least amount of shine with the least amount of roughness, rather, the most amount of shine in the roughness map. So, you know, as far as the brick tops, that looks exactly like I want it to look. Unfortunately, it's doing it all over because I haven't run a mask through it. And all we need for that is a blend node. And I'm also going to decide whether or not I want it to apply to my edges. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll have it be both of them together because this way you're going to get to learn something. So far, as far as masks that we have, we have this mask that gives us edges and then we have this mask that gives us the stuff in the middle. What I want to do is I want to combine these two masks so that I can cut it out of this roughness that I'm taking care of here. So what I can do is, I'm um, trying to think of the simplest way. We're s probably still going to have to invert it, though. Okay, so I've got this blend. I'm not going to put a mask in here. What I'm going to do, though, is have it be a lightened blend. At any point, the blend will always pick the lightest pixels. So because I'm putting, I want the white areas of both, I can combine them that way. I mean, it's not the cleanest mask in the world, but that's just a question of messing around with the levels. But I, this is the areas I don't want it. So I'm going to get another invert grayscale. And now I have the roughness only in the brick areas. And I kind of like the idea of leaving this stuff shiny because it's all metallic and cool. So let's plug that into the roughness. And that looks very different now. You know, and we could have done it separately. You know, again, with the masks, it, this is just, it's a question of figuring out how to most efficiently get what you want. So whatever you plug in the mask down here is going to be cut out up here. All right. So I think that's our roughness done. The metallic, maybe we'll get rid of the metallic in the, in the bricks and kind of leave the background. Uh, it's a pretty stupid looking material, so I, I'm not feeling particularly inspired. This material was really about being able to introduce certain nodes in a certain order. Uh, so it was never destined to be the most beautiful material in the world. And I promise the next one is going to be more useful. But I think in this lesson, we've really taken a look at most of the sort of workhorse nodes that you use over and over and over again. So in that sense, it's been useful. Why don't we go ahead and just invert this mask so we can call it done? Let's see what happens. No, you know, I really do like that metal. I, maybe we'll just use this mask and have the background be not metal. That's better. Okay, um, I'm going to call it done. Uh, we'll put this ugly material to bed. We can use clean. And in the next set of videos, we're actually going to start building something that you can use. And in the process, we're also going to introduce a couple more, you know, slightly advanced nodes that are also very, very useful.